Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. How are we getting on? Welcome to a brand new camp build. So today we are working with the new Helvetia building set that is currently on the Atomic Shop. And there is quite a lot in this one, so quite a bit to unpack. So let's jump in. Okay, so yeah, it's quite a lot to this particular set. So there's the main building set and a few extra bits and pieces that are on the sides of it as well and around this building set that are quite cool. And yeah, there's some bits that I really like. There's a few issues with it as well that we'll get to in a moment. But uh, overall, I think it's a pretty decent pickup, this one. So let's have a look where we are. You can see the wayward is just down to the south of us there. We're a little bit off to the north on the other side of the river. This patch of trees up here is um, it's quite a nice little spot. There's a few flat bits of ground in here really good for small kind of off the path camps and it works with this nice little cottage design that we're going to go with and uh, yeah definitely a favorite spot of mine this one I've only built here a couple of times now but uh, i do like it quite a lot so speaking of cottages we are going to start with a three by three foundation sort of this is a fairly simple little build really but the roof in particular and some other little bits and pieces can change up the profile a bit to make it a bit more interesting to look at. So I've got kind of horseshoe shape going on here with this blank section in the middle that is going to have a found a porch even in there. Looks okay. Did have mixed feelings about this porch initially. The colour scheme I wasn't convinced by. The same goes for the walls actually that we're going to have a look at in just a second. But uh, I think they are actually growing on me a bit the more I look at them. It doesn't, as far as I can tell, come with a staircase, though, this particular set, so there isn't a matching stair for the porch. The contemporary set, which is the one I used there, works quite well, but um, if you haven't got it, I could imagine that being a bit of an issue. Yeah, have a look at these walls. They are very blue, and I would be surprised if we don't see different coloured variations of this set popping up on down the line. But, uh, yeah, my initial reaction was the blue was a bit much, but it's kind of growing on me. Uh, the colours do look quite... Uh, bold and cool actually in a way love those window canopies they're a great addition really really nice and uh, will be fun to use for other things as well just kind of texture up the outside of walls and stuff which is always nice not sure where they are in the build menu though we also have two different textures for the internal walls here which i quite like the, uh, you've got the y-shaped ones that i'm going to use here and there's also vertical sort of struts on them as well i really do like the internal textures on these i think they you can wallpaper these, but the actual base texture looks really cool, so I'm going to stick with that, actually, for this build. So I'm double-siding some walls here, because this is going to sort of indicate where the upstairs area, tiny little upstairs area, is going to be. And I'm going to need some double-sided walls on the top, which is going to require half walls, specifically, I should say. Which is going to require double-sided walls underneath. So I've got a staircase in here. We'll get the first set of half walls on. Might as well do the ones around the back while we're here with the windows. Yeah, I've used this modern-looking um, staircase. It's the Guild of Antiquities one, I believe. Initially, I changed my mind later on and changed it out for the log cabin one because it looked kind of better to my eye. But one of the good things about this Guild of Antiquities one is you can snap particularly um, worktops, countertops, through the legs of it, which was quite helpful during the decoration phase. I'll touch on that again during the tour at the end. For now, we're going to flamethrower these half walls so that we can double up. Not quite quick enough there. <laughs> nice. Now we can grab these half walls again and flip them around. Double these ones up. These ones obviously are going to be on the inside. And we'll have some that are showing on the outside as well. We'll deal with in a minute. So I'm going to take some of these double sided walls off down here now. Because I won't need them. And uh, we will play around with those in a moment. We'll repair everything for now. Because it's a lot quicker than trying to... Uh, individually select each broken wall now we can get some roofs on so this bit is really going to as i say mess around with the the shape of it make it a bit more interesting to look at so a couple of corner pieces there a couple down here and this is the bit where it gets slightly complicated and we start encountering some issues i really like the texture for this roof set and the look of it the wooden shingles look really cool that went well but there are a couple of issues with the sort of placement and snapping of it so I'm going to drop this down to flat so that I can sort of more easily see what I'm doing and work around it. And I played around with this mid section of the roof for a while, but I ended up going with the sort of straight sloped section in the end. The easiest way of getting this in place and doing it correctly would have been to put the triangle sloped wall pieces on first and then snap to those. 
which is not what I did the first time around. And that sort of highlighted one of the issues with this particular build set, which is that uh, sometimes these roof pieces will snap a little lower than they should. And it happens a lot in different positions. You kind of see the one on the right there is a little bit down on where it's meant to be. I'll come back and fix that in a sec. But yeah, those roof pieces do go in the wrong place and then they cause all manner of issues. Like you can't remove them sometimes without swapping them out for other pieces first. So that's something that could definitely do with a bit of tweaking if you happen to see this Bethesda, but otherwise, definitely cool. I really like the look of it. So, Single-sided half wall piece there, just to plug up the gap there, and now we can easily go ahead and use triangles here. Had to pull the roof off in the middle there so that uh, I can actually get that initial one in, but uh, we get there in the end. So you can see this one is um, a little bit low here, this um, right-hand end of the middle section, or the left as we're looking at it now. And getting this to sort of pop up to the right height, not be at the wrong angle, is problematic. Fortunately, we're able to pull it out just easily enough, which sometimes you can't, so I'll take the win on that. But a lot of playing around was required to persuade this to snap where I wanted it to, not least of all because there's no roofs underneath to, uh, no walls rather, underneath to guide the snapping. But I put that triangle on there, and now it's snapped to the right place, and we'll put this back. So, uh, yeah, a little bit temperamental on occasion, but uh, it did work. And I ran into this issue a couple of times when I was sort of experimenting with things, so a little problematic. Moving on inside, down this end is the one separate room we're going to have on the ground floor. The rest of it's going to be sort of open plan. We'll get these walls in first. It's double side, we need to use a different set to the Helvetia one, but the contemporary one is my personal favourite. There we go, and we'll flip those out for... The new Helvetia walls, because I want to keep the interior texture being the same. And we're going to do the same on the door here. I was a little concerned that because of the roof over the Helvetia door, that that might cause an issue. You can see at the top there. Fortunately, it's such a small little kind of roof that it doesn't really matter. And we've got a glass triangle piece on the top there, just because I did want to double side. But if it can, can be done... Well, I'm finding it harder and harder to believe it can be done because I tried just about every piece I had and it did not want to play ball. So uh, I went with the glass one as it's much less hassle in the end. Speaking of things that are a hassle, getting this particular triangular gap here plugged up was also a total pain in the neck. It did not want to snap in for some reason and I tried God knows how many things. I think I spent about half an hour at least trying to get this darn wall piece in playing around with build order and all manner of stuff. But I did come up with a solution, which was this. You can see we managed to get the uh, one in there okay, as we did earlier. This one will not snap. But as we can see, I managed to figure it out on the other side. You see it's gone dark while I was trying to figure out how to make this work. So, what we're going to do is take this roof section, make it flat, then we're going to break out the flamethrower, and basically flamethrower everything that could possibly be intersecting and causing problems. <laughs> in a nutshell, apart from this now flat roof that we've got the flamethrower on. So the roof and the walls either side, we're going to destroy all of those. So persuade the flamethrower to cooperate. There we go. We'll drop back downstairs. We're going to grab a wall to put underneath. I'm going to use a door, just because it tends to be easier to remove walls when they're in the door form than other forms. If that makes sense, the door frame. But um, I don't know whether it was actually necessary. But given the hassle I had, I'm going to make it as easy as possible. And as we can see, I can now snap that triangle in. So we'll make that roof back to the slope that we want. And we'll run down here and repair it. And finally, we have all of the gaps plugged. So, a lot of faffing around to make that work. But we got there in the end. We'll take this doorway out. And on that note, <laughs> with it finally done, I think it's time to head off and decorate this thing and make it look nice and homely. So, I'll see you in the tour. Here we go then. So yeah, this whole build took, well, the main structure took maybe between a quarter and a third of the build budget. Because it's quite small, didn't take too much space. There's only a little bit of double siding going on as well. But uh, quite happy with that. It left a lot of room for decorating, which I do rather like to do. And we get quite a cool effect of a cottage, colourful cottage, in the woods, I think. Works quite nicely. So... As you can see in the foreground here, we have a new little fence that is part of the Helvetia set. And this is definitely, or part of the bundle, I should say, with it. It's definitely worth picking up, I think. You kind of need to use the flamethrower to get things to sit close together. 
but there's a whole bunch of different pieces in there but obviously match up there's individual ones of different styles there are multiple sections stuck together as a single unit there are angled ones at various angles it's very very cool definitely worth trying that out we've got the new uh windmill generator and my shelter tucked in there loads and loads of brambles added around the outside just to bring the the grasses and the wildlife up to the building to make it look like it actually has been here for more than about 30 seconds quite like how that looks simple bathroom facilities out back i might have to move the shower though as i do tend to load in right where the shower is which is slightly annoying like my little aircon unit on the back there especially as the pipes from the cooking station actually look like they're connected to it it looks quite cool there's Radstag Field Dressing Station, which uh, I'm planning to make actual use of in terms of gameplay before too terribly long, though I need to switch over from herbivore to carnivore if I'm going to do that, which is going to take a bit longer. But definitely nice to have that out there and get that showcased, as well as a few other the cool bits and pieces that have been added recently just on the side here, the car and uh, this tree swing there, tire swing. And uh, yeah, we've got a few bits of grass that have been inadvertently bulldozed on the side, but... Uh, Needy. Decided to use the Securitron vendor there, which is fine for adventure mode because he's not powered up, but to get this footage I had to jump into a custom world as I could not persuade the game to give me weather that wasn't foggy as heck when I wanted to record, which is Murphy's Law at work I guess. But unfortunately using custom world meant that thing doesn't actually require power, so it's making an awful lot of noise. It's a cool vendor, but it does make a lot of noise, which is why I don't use it very often. Here we are, a little front garden area. I do like the little uh, stone marked path there. Decided to put a couple of the crafting stations outside just because there wasn't a lot of room inside and those ones kind of look okay out here. Got some crops there for keeping my character fed and because it dresses up the front quite nicely. This little homely entrance here. This particular door is also part of the set, it comes with a building set, and I definitely like this one. I could see myself using it a lot. It works both ways round, it doesn't look too out of place, it's it's quite it's clean, but it's not too clean. It it hits a lot of the buttons for me. So here we go. Power armor station under the stairs, because again, struggling to find somewhere to put that. But it kind of works under there. Fairly standard kitchen design for me. As I mentioned earlier, I changed from the Guild of Antiquity staircase to this log cabin one. But I put the right hand countertop in before I made that change because it allowed me to deliberately clip through the posts that support it, which you can't really do with the log cabin set as well. But with the Guild of Antiquities one, you can. So it made it fit quite nicely with the uh, kitchen under there. That's the new display case there, new Halvisha one that is very similar to the Thanksgiving one that we've had for ages. But uh, this is a new one that's just been added as well alongside all this stuff. I think it's in the bundle too. So I did keep the lighting kind of subdued in here. Kept with the plain walls without any extra wallpaper on there. Obviously you can wallpaper them, but uh, I thought I really like the textures, so I'll stick with it. A few bits and pieces around. We'll progress through to our crafting room on this side. There's not a lot of room in here for a door, which is why I went for the curtain, because, uh, yeah, any door's just going to open into a space that you're going to have to try and move through afterwards, so it's going to be a bit awkward. So, curtain was the way, I think, there. There we go. A pretty simple little crafting room. I managed to squeeze most of the essentials in here. A little bit of decoration around. I do like that Nika Cola lamp, adding a, a little bit of detailing on the wall and a little bit of movement to the light, which is nice. So, I squeezed most of this in quite nicely. A few little gaps I could have plugged, maybe, but uh, it's cool. The uh, build budget on this one, by the way, I had maybe a fifth or so of the budget left when it was done, I think. And uh, this probably half to two thirds of it is decoration, so quite happy with the look of this. I do like having a lot of room to decorate. The floor, by the way, is from the abandoned mindset, which uh, I felt went quite well. I was tempted to use carpets or something, but they were a bit too clean for what I had in mind, so I went for the rough wooden floors. Daphne's hanging out down here. There's actually one piece of wall decoration that was supposed to be above the magazine rack there that, uh, unfortunately, has disappeared for some reason. I don't know why. Um, I think I flamethrowered something or something, <laughs> and uh, it decided not to come back, so... I'll have a play around and make, try and make that come back later. But it looks alright. 
Here's our little player sleeping area. I put the runner rug down there just to kind of break up an otherwise blank stretch of floor and uh, change the flooring over to match the stairs a little bit better. There's Daphne's little bedroom space in the corner there. It was kind of blank space down that end and I didn't know what to do with it, which is why I tucked Daphne in there. I thought about Stephen Scarberry, but he won't fit. His uh, ally station is too big. Unfortunately, Daphne is having some difficulty with the stairs here, so uh, she's also blocking my way down. She tends to kind of fall off the stairs and hop up and down them a bit, because her ally station is right at the top of the stairs, which is a little suboptimal, but uh, it works, you know. I needed something in there. There we go. Nice, cosy, kind of rustic little cottage. I quite like this. I do like a lot of the textures on this one. Still not 100% on the blue, but um, as I say, it is kind of growing on me. That front bow window is quite weird as well, but there's something a bit odd about it, but it does work quite well as well. And yeah, it was a nice cottagey vibe. There's our new windmill generator. I really like that thing, especially for scrappy sort of country cottagey type camps. That goes in really well. Only 12 power, but for ones where you're happy not to have the decon arch, works nicely. Nice to have a garden area to provide a nice approach. So I hope you folks enjoyed that one. If you did, please consider dropping subs and likes. I do very, very much appreciate it. As usual, down below the video, you can find social media links, merch store, channel memberships, all that good stuff. If you're interested in supporting the channel that way, it really, really helps out. So massive thank you to everybody who's done that already. And if you get a chance, join us for live streams as well. We are, of course, playing Fallout 76, and we are playing Resident Evil 4 at the moment as well, which has been really, really good fun. So I do hope you join us for those. But for now, thank you very much for watching. I look forward to speaking to you all very, very soon.